Well, hello everybody and welcome back to G-Bear's Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And yeah, today I did some cleaning. And uh, I got a fly that is irritating the heck out of me. He knows I just put the fly swatter down, so he's coming around to bother me. All right. Anyway, yeah, I got through here and I did a bunch of cleaning and uh, got all the debris put away. Got my trailer moved over and I'll be uh, anchoring that down and chaining it right to the container so uh, it doesn't take any illegal trips without me. And uh, I got a pile of wood here to go that's going to get burnt and all these cardboard boxes that I got sitting around here are all waiting to go in the fire pit but it's full and uh, it's full because it's windy. And as you can see, the turbine is kicking out up there. And uh, you don't burn on windy days. So I gotta wait for everything to calm down before I can get rid of all of that. And look at this, all cleaned up in front of the containers and in front of the garage too. And yeah, you're probably saying, well, what happened to the, uh, the that radio alarm saw that was sitting out there? Well, I moved that too. I got that inside here. And uh, like I said, anybody interested in this, just let me know. I'll let it go for 250 And I have the owner operator's manual with it. And it comes complete. And here, you press on the red button as a safety button. This is a lock for the, the trigger. But... Uh, Yes, it, it's a great tool. Um, I really don't need it. Of course, that right after I sell it, I'll wish that I had it back. But I'd like to have the money even more than the saw because I've got chop saws coming out the yin yang. I got table saws. I got another chop saw down there. That's a, a 12 inch down there. I can do almost anything I need to do with my table saws and chop saws um, that this thing could do. And if I was really into um, doing a lot more cabinet making like I did in the uh, years past while I was contracting, I would probably keep this thing and set it up so I could do some uh, neat stuff in here. And this thing has, uh, you know, you, you got the uh, radius here. You unlock this and then you have to raise it up, but you can rotate this and uh, do angle cuts on it. Then this can come, come out. And uh, you got a lock here. You can swing this whole thing to the other other direction so that the blade is running this way. And then you use the, the, the gate here as your, your gate and you feed your wood through it from that side this way. You don't feed it from the back side. There are warning labels everywhere. But uh, yeah, you can lock it for the width of a cut you want right here on the, uh, on the gauge. Lots of neat stuff that you can do with this thing. Uh, you got the uh, the miter index release here and a positive arm lock and things like that. I, like I said, I've got the whole operator's manual. It's got a dust collector connection on there. You can hook a shop back to it. And uh, anybody interested, 250 bucks. First person to uh, show me the money gets it. All right. So yeah, I got things cleaned up. I had that old... Uh, um, mat there that carpeting and I put that down there in front of my workbench just to uh, keep my feet out of the dust for a while while I'm working and uh, yep that's it so let's move on down the line this is going to be a short video today I cleaned up the stuff in front of the uh, camper there I moved uh, the horses over to the side there because they hold those buckets from the wind blowing them away and uh, I'll go get into cleaning that stuff out pretty soon then the, uh, the jack and the um, bottle jacks are all going to get put away. Uh, I just put them out there because I was going to uh, work on changing the tires. But then the van transmission came up. And uh, yeah, that ate up a lot of money. So it's uh, slowing me down on my uh, work progress, not having the cash flow. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to sell some things off and get rid of them if anybody's interested. All right. 
let's move on down the road here. And uh, hey, that'd be a good sign sound for a song here. Uh, what the heck? If this is all going to get cleaned out here, and the deck is going to get cleaned off. I'm uh, in the process of working through this a little at a time. All of this stuff is getting cleared out of here. And uh, inside of the room, oh, look at this. Floor's all cleaned up. All, everything put away nice and neat. All my batteries in place and locked down. My battery charger down there. And I got another 24-volt um, battery there. And there's my um, two-stroke gas uh, generator. And that's for emergencies. And, uh, yep, yeah, batteries are all nice and clean. And that little fake MPPT controller is working like a champ. It's doing everything it's supposed to do. And uh, so far... So good. Uh, I like it. Now, granted, it's not a real expensive item, and I'm sure there's MPTs out there that'll do a lot more than what this one will. But this one is adequate for what I need right now, and it has increased my input to my batteries. And it's showing 12.9 now, and we're late in the day here, and I'm still showing 12.9. Usually that's down to 12.6, 12.7 at this point. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. This PWM here has 600 watts of panels hooked just to that one controller. So that's almost half of my panels are just going through that one controller. And that's why it's a little bit higher than the others. But... Let's explain something about PWM and MPPT controllers. Okay, we've been having little, little discussions on that, going back and forth on it. These are controllers. These are DC to DC controllers. These are not inverters. That's an inverter. Okay, you see how big the wires are on that inverter? Those come from the battery banks. Yes, there's a lot of power going into that inverter. The wires coming out, I've got two six gauge wires at each connection, line one and line two and neutral, going into my electric panel. Okay, that's where it that becomes AC is on this side. Everything on that side is DC. So you remember, 12 volts DC is only one tenth of 120 volts AC. So you've got you got to remember that when you're talking about amps and all of that. So the amps coming in off my 1385 watts of panels is probably, uh, oh, I'd say 115 amps coming in off of there. But that's 12 volt DC amps. That's not 120 volt. You ever wonder why you can put your fingers across the positive and negative uh, poles of a battery and you don't get electrocuted? Well, there's a difference there. There's a lot of amperage here. Okay? Each one of these batteries is 223 amp hours. Of course, they're in series parallel, so two of them equal 200 and 232 amp hours. But there's nine um, times 232 here. That's a lot of amp hours. I just put my fingers across the positive and negative, and guess what? I didn't get electrocuted. Okay, now I don't re recommend you guys doing that, but uh, you got to remember there is a difference between low voltage and high voltage. And we're talking low voltage here at the controllers. Okay, so uh, PWM is basically what they call, call pulse width um, modulation. And PWM, I don't know if you know anything about sine waves, this is a true sine wave inverter. Now, a modified sine wave inverter, it takes the electrical sine waves and it, they go in squares like this. So they go up, square across, go down, square across, go up, square across, go down. Okay, that is not a very good way of handling electricity for electronics. And it, you can burn up your um, computers, TVs, and all of that stuff using modified sine wave. 
Now, pure sine wave has perfect rounded ups and downs. So they go up and they down as a smooth run. And we get the, basically the same thing between PWM and MPPT. Well, MPPTs and PWM. Okay, so you do get a difference between those. And PWMs give you that modified sine wave modulation. So it's a jerky, harsh modulation. It's a pulse. That's not what you really want, especially feeding your batteries, because it's, it's pulsing them into the batteries. Okay, so your best bet is to go with MPPT solar. Now what MPPT solar does, it puts that smooth run in there. And again, the uh, PWM is pulse width modulation. That's uh, the modulation is the, the, the lines. Okay, it's like a sine, the sine wave. Okay, now MPPT is maximum power point tracker. Okay, and that's a DC to DC. What that does is it, it reads the power coming in from your panels, it analyzes them, and it finds the best output for those to your batteries, and it controls that output. So your output is always even going into your batteries. And then you have settings on here. As you go through the settings here, that 41 degrees Celsius is the temperature. Okay, so 11.8 amps are coming in off those panels right now. And there's no load on it, so there's no amp showing. I've gone 221 amp hours out of the, through this controller so far. And let's... Uh, Okay, so the, the photovoltaic cells will shut off at 14.2. The load will turn on at 12.6, and that'll put, it's like a dump load, okay? And, and then the, the load will turn off at 10.7, so it doesn't kill your batteries. Now, you can set the load to run for 24 hours or... Um, shorter periods of time, or you can have it run dust to dawn. So you, you can change the settings on those things and it works out. Now, the neat thing about this one is it comes with two USB here, and those are five volts, uh, two and a half amp, I think, and they, and they will handle even um, Apple iPhones and so forth. So you can charge off of those. Okay. Now, I failed in this thing and I feel a little warm off of it. This one is actually a little warmer than that one. This one is about the same temperature as that one. So this is the cooler of the, the group right now. So I will be changing over to the other one of those and adding it in here and see if I don't get a better rating down the line. Now this one's showing 14.2 on the voltage. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, 14.2 right now on an input. I don't know where that's coming from. I got 13.1 and 12.9. So whatever's going on there is not right. But the charge light should be on and it's not. So this unit may be bad and I'm going to be changing that out and I will have just two of these up here running the system. This one is coming out all together. And uh, I will get one more MPPT that I can put inside because right now I have one of the Harbor Freight PWMs in there to keep track of what's going on with my batteries and it lets me know if I need to shut things off, quit watching TV at midnight, things like that. All right. Right now we've got enough wind to create uh, 70 to 80 watts of electricity. Again, it's not a whole hell of a lot, but it helps. 70 to 80 watts will run a light bulb. All right. That's about it for, for today, everybody. Just wanted to cover that. Now remember, those controllers, all they do is control the input power from the solar panels to the batteries. It just protects overcharge or undercharge of the batteries. That's all they do. 
There's no inversions built into those. The MOSFETs in those are designed to just control voltage coming in and voltage going out. All right, that's all there is to it. I hope that explains it to you. G-Bear reminding you, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have and you haven't commented yet, I haven't officially welcomed you aboard. So welcome aboard. G-Bear signing off.